From imaginary Brumley to real life Bradford. This video explores Priestley's message about inequality in post-industrial Britain and tours locations that appear in the original play. Brumley is a fictional industrial town that bears many similarities to the playwright's own birthplace of Bradford in West Yorkshire. By highlighting the real life working conditions of people there, we can better understand the context and the influence behind an inspector calls. Girl has just died on her way to the infirmary after swallowing some disinfectant. Born in Bradford in 1894 to a mill worker and a schoolmaster, Priestley grew up absorbed in the social and economic contradictions in his beloved city. He may have left Bradford to study at Cambridge, but Bradford never left him. I belong at heart to the pre-1914 North Country. Part of me is still in Bradford. Can never leave it. During the Industrial Revolution, Bradford grew from a small market town to the raw capital of the world. In 50 years from 1800, the number of textile mills grew from 1 to 129, each mill its own metropolis. Priestley observed that the Industrial Revolution was making the ruling classes, factory owners like Mr Burling, far richer at the expense of factory workers like Eva Smith. Statistics from the time shows that only 30% of children born to textile workers reached the age of 15. Life expectancy in Bradford was just over 18 years which is one of the lowest in the country. Here, in the 1909 map of Bradford, you can see the key locations alluded to in his play. Our first location is here, where Ever Smith dies. It's now an NHS hospital. Two hours ago, a young woman died in the infirmary. She'd been taken there this afternoon because she swallowed a whole lot of strong disinfectant. We're now at St Luke's Hospital in Bradford. This was originally a workhouse and at the time it was around in the Edwardian period. This is the sort of place that J.B. Priestley, who grew up in Bradford, would have thought about as where Inspector Gould would have met the original body. In here there would have been a mortuary as well. The mortuary saw brisk business. The 1,000 inmates lived in cramped and insanitary conditions. The mortality rate was very high. Workhouses were largely funded and run under the Poor Law Union. Our next location is Bradford's Industrial Museum. It gives us a chance to, to touch and feel the conditions under which machine workers like Ever Smith experienced. In the play, Mr Burling recalls his relationship with Ever Smith. She was a very lively, good-looking girl, country-bred, I fancy, and she'd been working one of our machine shops for over a year. Here we are, Bradford Industrial Museum. This is exactly the sort of equipment that would have been used at the time of when an inspector calls. You can see the date here on the plaque of this piece of machinery. The sort of conditions that people have been working in and what the labourers were fighting over to get a better wage. This sign would have been likely displayed in the factories and mills like Mr Burling's. It reads, any woman or girl working about factory machinery will have their hair put up or otherwise confined in a net cap by order. Strict instructions like this show how all aspects of the mill workers' life were stipulated. This starkly contrasts the fanciful shopping sprees available to the Mrs Burlings of this world. Our next location is Lister's Mill, the world's largest silk factory. Just as Sheila and Gerald's marriage strengthens the Croft Burling business partnership, Lister's Mill rose from the union of two wealthy families. The strike was a pitiful affair. Let them all come back at the old rates, except the four or five ringleaders who will start trouble. This girl, Eva Smith, shed a lot to say, far too much, so she had to go. The strike that triggers the action in the play was based on a real incident. Underpaid and overworked mill workers rallied together to protest against their exploitation, going on a strike that lasted 19 weeks. The strike was a catalyst for improving workers' rights and led to the formation of the Bradford Labour Union. Irony is a key force in the play. In a mill, a burler is one of the lowest paid positions. Is it a coincidence that Priestley names the factory owner Mr Burling? Our next real life location is the inspiration behind Millwood's department store in fictional Brumley. In Priestley's time, Brown Muffin Co on Market Street was the city's number one place to shop. After being dismissed by Mr Burling, Ever was taken on in a shop, and a good shop too, Millwood's. It was a nice change from a factory. She felt she was making a good fresh start. The Victorians invented modern department shopping. By 1900, the likes of Marks and Spencers, John Lewis and Selfridges were well established. 
The workers, like Eva Smith, within these stores were known as shop girls. Their job was described as standing, smiling and serving. Shop girls were regarded as aspiring types who wanted to do better for themselves. That's why Mrs Birding felt that Eva Smith should be grateful. Lastly, we'll take a look at disparity in living accommodation in Priestley's Bradford. The inspector says, it would do us all good sometimes if we tried to put ourselves in the place of these young women counting their pennies in their dingy little back bedrooms. Here you can see what was in the back-to-back -back housing. They were built in the Industrial Revolution, designed to house a rapidly expanding population in factory towns. Hi, here we are, some back-to-back -back housing in Bradford, just uh, as it would have been for the other workers that grew up in Bradford. Remember, we've got the front of every house, and you go through the big alleyway there, and you go to another house round the back. And the building behind me would have been the corner shop before we had all the supermarkets and department stores. Due to the lack of ventilation or proper sanitation, back-to-back -back housing was discontinued under the 1909 Housing Act. This type of home was a world away from the homes of the Burlings and the Crofts. In the stage directions for the play, the opening scene was described as the dining room of a fairly large suburban house belonging to a prosperous manufacturer. The general effect is substantial and heavily comfortable, but not cosy and homelike. Here we are now, a statue of the man himself, J.B. Priest. This is where he's standing overlooking the city of Bradford, to which was very dear to his heart. And the book in Inspector Calls brings to life many of the things that have helped shape British society and to help us understand a lot more about our society and how we all interact with each other. Uh, here he is, here's the man, and come and join us in Bradford, great place to be.